Of the dozens and dozens of boots that I've bought throughout the years, there are some I wish I hadn't. Welcome, I'm Carl Morawski, and this is the channel that helps you own less and own better. First up are these Paul Evans Double Monk Strap Dress Boots. And honestly, these really count more as like a dress shoe than an actual boot, but there were a few issues that came out right off the bat. The first one was they wore way quicker than any other shoe or boot that I had at the time. Now, these were the most expensive boots that I had bought to that, that point. It was like 475 bucks. And my Alden cap toes were way outlasting these things. They just, they just seemed to deteriorate every time I wore them. So that was the first part. And the second part was some of the imagery that Paul Evans was using. They were, they were showing these awesome like patina paint job boots and shoes that looked stunning, you know, even in some of their collaborations that they have done with other makers. I know they did one with articles of style and stuff. They looked great, but the ones that I got were way different. And even the images on the website showed these incredible, like painted, awesome looking boots. The ones that I got were kind of mundane. I mean, there was a little bit of that, but not very much. Definitely not even close to the level that they showed on their website or social media. So I was pretty disappointed when I got them. And to be honest with you, I just don't wear them that much anymore. Number one, I think it's a pretty dated style. You know, the whole double monk thing was really in a while back, but uh, these just have found their place at the back of my closet. Sometimes I'll take them out and look at them and go, yep, that was 475 bucks down the drain. Just not worth it, would not recommend, and definitely wouldn't buy again. Now, number two is the Duke Chelsea boot from Thursday Boots. I bought this boot originally you know, it was a while back in my channel. You could actually go and watch the original review. And I was really happy with them. I wore them quite a bit. They were very comfortable. But then something started to happen after like about a year or so. They started to just go flat. And I felt like I was literally standing on the pavement. There was no real support. Uh, the pour on or whatever they used for that insole had collapsed. So it was just solid. And honestly, they're just very uncomfortable to wear unless I was sitting down for most of the day, which is like never the case. So, you know, originally, and for the first year, I, I love these boots, they were great. And you know, honestly, now I don't even think they're very good looking boots. Number one, I don't like the kind of squared elastic section that they have. I'm not a fan of two-tone leather anyway. Um, there was probably just a bit of like excitement when I bought them and, and I didn't want to admit that, you know, maybe they were kind of ugly, but a lot of people love them. And actually, when I sat down and talked to Connor, one of the founders of Thursday Boots, he did tell me that they're constantly refining their boots. So the Duke that you buy right now is not the same Duke boot that I bought. So hopefully they've improved, they've gotten better. I know that they have taken uh, a lot of feedback from people, especially on their jackets, and refined their product to, to make a, a better overall product. And I can't fault them for that. I actually give them a lot of credit. So it's cool, you know, I, mean, I spent 200 bucks on them. It seems like Thursday Boots and Arizona Iced Tea are the only things that just don't seem to be changing their prices in these crazy times. So I give them a lot of respect for that. Uh, but that being said, there's still a boot that I wish I had never bought. Number three, the Woolrich Yankee Boot. Now, this was a boot that I had bought at the time. I saw an article on Dappered and I was like, man, those look pretty good and the price was right. They were on sale and I think they were like 250 bucks. And you know, to be honest with you, they're not a bad looking boot, but the problem was that when I wore them, when I first put them on, they were a bit tight, a little narrow is what I should say. And I kind of didn't think at the time anything of it. I was sort of a, a novice at the whole boot thing. I figured they would stretch and eventually it would be fine. Well, they stretched all right. And the problem was is that they were narrow and my foot is an E width. So I found that I was actually kind of standing on the welt. That's how bad they fit. And that was very, very uncomfortable. You know, especially, like I said, I mean, I spend a lot of time on my feet. So when I'm walking around or standing or whatever, I could definitely feel that enough so that I was like, I, I gotta get rid of these and I gotta get something else. And actually that was when I started to look in Nick's boots. So it was my own mistake. The boot itself really isn't all that bad. They just didn't offer it in a lot of widths. And uh, to this day, I don't think they even offer that boot anymore. But if you could find it on eBay or Grailed or something like that, just know that they sort of run a little bit narrow. Other than that, I think they're a pretty cool looking boot. Number four, my Doc Martin 1460s. I bought these boots. These are the made in England versions. I bought these boots when I was gonna do the history of the Doc Martin boot. And I did that a few years ago. And I was thinking that I would sort of have the boot of my high school years, which I loved. I mean, I wore them all the time, you know, as a metalhead and kind of like, 
you know, I was in, in bands and stuff like that. That was kind of like our default uniform, right? Was jeans, uh, 1460 or taller, Doc Martens and like a band t-shirt. And that was kind of what we wore, you know? So I thought that I'd be recapturing my youth in a way with those great boots that I remembered. And they're not bad, okay? Especially the made in England ones, they're definitely not bad as, as far as compared to the main line. But I gotta tell you, uh, they're just too squishy. They're sneaker-like. And that's the whole idea is like, you know, Doc Martens began as an orthotic, like they would make like, uh, you know, orthopedic shoes for people. So they carried over that air wear sole, which is very comfortable, very squishy, a lot of, lot of give there, but they're almost too squishy. There's no real support. So when you look at that heel counter um, and just the overall structure of the boot, it's, it's really, you kind of swim in them when you walk, you know, you can feel it flexing around your foot. It's not a comfortable feeling over time, for sure. If you're gonna put them on and kind of loaf around or hang out or whatever, that's okay. But I gotta tell you, I just don't wear them anymore. Uh, they're not bad looking. The QC on these wasn't really too bad. So, uh, you know, I wish I could say that I wear them more, but you know what? 16 year old me is gonna have to remain in the past. I just don't wear these Doc Martens and I kind of wish I didn't buy them. Finally, and it pains me to admit this, the John Lofgren Devil's Causeway Engineer Boots. They're beautiful. They are absolutely gorgeous, made out of some great leather, made in the way all John Lofgren stuff is, which is very, very, very nice. I just can't wear them. I, I could put them on, but it takes me 20 minutes to get these things on and another 20 minutes to get them off. And I just don't have that kind of time. And most of the time, you know, in the morning, you're putting on what you're gonna wear for the day. Oftentimes in the morning, I just don't have the, the giddy up to go sit there and struggle with this boot. Now I have done it maybe a couple dozen times, but I gotta tell you, like not enough to justify the cost. These were $1,300. And I have a high instep. You wanna come up? Come on. come on. And I have a high instep, which means the top part of your foot. And that makes my foot sort of tall, right? So getting that taller foot down that narrower shaft is just a recipe for disaster. Now I've tried and have to use the plastic bag trick, um, which is, you know, you, it basically helps your foot slide into these boots and you sort of rip them off to get them out. I don't wanna do that every single time, especially for $1,300 boots. And to be fair, I really guess just, I didn't know what I was getting into at the time. Uh, and it pains me to say, because they're beautifully made. When they're on, they fit just fine. But you know, that whole getting them on and taking them off process, if I had known that in the beginning, I wouldn't have bought these boots. And now they sit there and they kind of mock me in the corner. $1,300 worth of boot looking back at me and going, hey, you know, <laughs> why don't you wear me more? And I just, I can't do it. Now I actually have reviewed all these boots. I took down my Paul Evans review because I actually did that before they really started deteriorating. That was a lesson learned way, way early on in the channel, which was, you know what? You've got to put some time into your boots and learn about the product before you do a review because I did them after maybe a week or two of owning them and wearing them around and uh, they hadn't really shown their true colors. So besides the Paul Evan, there are reviews of all these boots and you can see those in a playlist that I've made for you right here. Now that's my casual boot playlist and inside there you'll find all kinds of boots, many of which I still own and I'm very happy with. Unfortunately, the five on this list, they just don't make the cut. And actually soon in the future, I'm gonna get rid of all but five pair of casual boots. I just, I'm becoming inundated with boots and, and they're almost taking over my life. So I think it might be a fun thing to do, and I'll, I'll make sure I document it with you, to go through the five boots that I'm gonna keep. Now the rest I'm gonna give to friends and family and put up on eBay or Grailed or offer them to my Patreon or something like that. Um, please don't email me or message me asking about a specific pair because I, I don't wanna get into that right now. I will be able to you know, offer them up, but uh, anyway, uh, that'll be a time that you know in the future we'll, we'll go through that together. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it and I'll catch you next time.